Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Brilakis presenting case 254 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case in which the CART technique was used for canalizing a right coronary artery CTO. CART is a technique that was initially used a lot for CTO PCI, but is used infrequently currently, and this case illustrates some situations in which the CART may be useful even in the contemporary era. The patient was a gentleman with medical refractory angina. He had bypass twice and he had multiple PCIs. He presented with recurrent failure of a saphenous vein graft to the right coronary artery and he was sent to canalize the native right coronary artery CTO. He did have mildly reduced ejection fraction and this is his angiogram. The right coronary artery is diffusely diseased and uh, Although the anatomy is a little challenging because of significant tortuosity, we can start seeing that there may be an area of a nub, a little uh, tapered entry into the CTO, right after the takeoff of this acute marginal branch. And this is injection through the saphenous vein graft that has recurrent instant restenosis in the proximal segment and goes to the PDA. And we can see here that the distal vessel reconstitutes at the bifurcation of the PDA with the right posterior lateral. For planning, we perform coronary CT and geography, which can be extremely useful in cases that are complex like this. What we have here is a heavily calcific right coronary artery. This is the proximal cap, this is the acute marginal, this is the occluded segment, this is the distal vessel at the bifurcation, and this is the saphenous vein graft that feeds the PDA. And this is a static image. Once again, right coronary artery, occlusion of the takeoff of the marginal. There seems to be an entry into the occlusion, but there is calcium. We see the area of the occlusion has some intraluminal calcium, bifurcation of the distal cap. We also see the saphenous vein graft that comes and enters into the PDA. And uh, in terms of the length, the length of the occlusion was measured at approximately 34 millimeters. This is from the day of the procedure, and uh, we balloon the saphenous vein graft to restore some flow. So we have injection from the vein graft first, and then injection from the native right coronary artery. As we discussed before, we can see kind of a nub coming off at the proximal cap where the acute marginal takes off, and we see a bifurcation at the distal cap. Based on this, we decided to use a primary retrograde approach because of the calcium inside the occlusion and also because this branch we thought would be difficult to avoid with the wire wanting to go into this branch. So we used a long, large microcatheter Corsair with a Pilot 200. Pilot is very useful for taking big bends like this, 180 degree bend. It has uh, a parabolic grind and is less likely to prolapse into the other vessel. So very useful here in going from the vein graft into the PDA and then uh, eventually into the distal right coronary artery. Then we were able to advance uh, the Corsair microcatheter. So now we're coming closer to the uh, distal cap. And then we use the polymer jacketed wire, a gladius mongo, trying to go towards the proximal cap. Uh, you can see the wire seems to be knuckling there, likely hitting the proximal cap. We pushed, so the wire seems to knuckle and take the tortuosity of the vessel. This is under grade injection, and we see that uh, the knuckle is in the extra black location at the proximal cap. So what do we do now? We have extra plaque retrograde wiring. So our thought was we can try maybe with undergrade, now that we know exactly where we're going, to try to go into the location of the retrograde guide wire with an undergrade one. However, this uh, kept on entering into the extra plug space as well. And this is uh, when the cart became extremely useful because it is easy to deliver a balloon through a saphenous vein graft. If we were going retrograde through a septal, it would have been much more challenging to deliver a balloon, especially a large balloon, through that septal. But through the vein graft, we can deliver pretty much uh, more sized balloons. So we deliver the retrograde balloon, we inflated it, 
And then as we were deflating it, we advanced the undergrade Mongo wire, which nicely goes into the distal true lumen, as we confirm with contralateral injection. And this is how the cart differs from the reverse cart. In the reverse cart, the balloon comes from the undergrade direction, and it is the retrograde wire that enters into the space created by the undergrade balloon. In contrast, in cart, the balloon comes retrogradely, and then it is the undergrade wire that crosses into the space created by the retrograde inflated balloon. Again, in our case, this was feasible because we went retrograde through a soft and vein graft. This may not have been possible if we went through a septal, and especially if we're going through an epicardial collateral. Of course, we confirmed that we were in the distal true lumen, and indeed the wire was in the distal true lumen, the undergrade wire. We predilated, stented, and then got a nice result. And because there was a strong competitive flow from the vein graft that had been ballooned to allow for this, we ended up placing coils to occlude it. And this is the final angiogram. We did have a nice uh, flow, undergrade into the distal RCA, PDA, and right posterior lateral. Multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that CT can help facilitate planning of CTO and complex PCI. In this case, it helped us clarify a little bit the proximal cap location. Help us understand the lesion length, the bifurcation distal cap, and the presence of calcium both in the proximal cap as well as within the occlusion. When you have a recurrent saphenous vein graft failure, treating the native vessel provides a more durable solution because of the high rates of recurrent failure of saphenous vein grafts. And then a key point is the use of the CAR technique. When we're going retrograde through saphenous vein graft, it is usually quite easy to advance a retrograde balloon, as we did in this case. The retrograde balloon was inflated, creating a target for the undergrade wire, and this is the CAR technique that was successful in this case. Finally, calling the vein graft is something we often do when there is brisk competitive flow. There is relatively limited data, but it might reduce the potential risk of stent thrombosis because of competitive flow. Thank you.